We have all been uniquely and lovingly created in the image of God and called to live in fusion with Him and with one another. Each one of us have been designed for a purpose-filled destiny as the love, the light, and the glory of God to the world around us. We do this in multiple ways in our everyday life. The Convergence Zone celebrates the amazing life that comes forth through the convergence of God, people, and purpose. I'm Robert Richard Ellis, and welcome to The Converging Zone. Welcome to The Converging Zone. We have a, a great special guest today. He's a friend, he's an Italian, and he's a smart guy. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about quantum physics, how that plays a role in our lives, in our faith, and uh, welcome to the show today, my friend, Nick Castellano. Nick? Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good to, good Thanks to see you. Thanks for the Virgin Zone uh, inviting me here. Thanks. It's a good trip. <laughs> T tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, th this, your experience, your journey, your background, those things that got you here today. Well, I was raised uh, uh, the oldest of six in an Italian family, raised Catholic, and uh, pretty much they practiced on me when they were raising their kids, so I got the whack most of the time. Um, and uh, I went into uh, the Navy and became a nuclear power chemist and I was the um, instructor for nuclear power chemistry because I graduated first in the class. And uh, I taught nuclear power chemistry for 10 years in the Navy, got out, uh, started my own water treatment company. And um, about that time, I, um, I found the Lord through a thing called Promise Keepers. Yeah. And I went to this Promise Keepers event and I'm sitting there crying my eyes out. I got a crip on one side, a blood on the other side. <laughs> We're in Los Angeles crying, crying. And, and I got saved, and I, I realized that there was a closer relationship, but me being a scientist, I wanted to understand what the Word was really saying because I kept seeing um, discrepancies in what one pastor would say and another pastor would say and another pastor would say. So I uh, started getting into a little bit of the quantum physics and studying the history of the Word and then translating the Word into the Greek and Hebrew to find out what was it really saying. And then through that experience, I found out that um, all the different segments, all the different paths lead to the same truth, that we have all power, dominion, and authority through Christ Jesus, and we can either choose to step into that and be a victor, or, or choose to play the victim role. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your family. I know you got Michelle here in San Diego with us, and Victor, and, and, and other friends and family are coming. Tell us about your family, how, how you guys met, and how that journey. Well, I met my wife actually at a, a place called Cactus Jack's, a, a bar, and I didn't drink. Yeah. And uh, we talked all night that night uh, about God. And it was just amazing that uh, we just sat there and talked about God. She came in from a softball game, so she wasn't dressed up very pretty, and I looked like a bouncer in the place. <laughs> and uh, and uh, since then, uh, we've got, I've got a son at ASU right now, Arizona yeah. State University, yeah. and he's measuring, uh, majoring in psychology. And then I've got another son, Victor, nine years old, that came in to listen to Papa on TV. Yeah. That's great. Well, welcome. We're, we're glad to have you guys here. Thank you. Um, we're talking about science. Uh, how has science served you now that you did this research in the revelation that you have? How, how, how does it serve you, and are there times where science can get in the way of our faith. Well, and you see, that's the one thing, a misnomer, science is faith. Um, I explain, a theory is man's way of explaining how God does stuff. Right. Um, and so they create these theories that make man feel comfortable that he understands things. But a lot of times the theories themselves violate laws. And these are laws, the, the actual laws that these same scientists have set up. And when a theory violates a law, you gotta throw the theory out. For example, the theory of evolution. Right. That theory violates the second law of thermodynamics five different occasions, which means it violates something called entropy, which is everything is moving toward a, a state of chaos. But if everything's moving toward a state of chaos, yet evolution showing us move up in the chain, that violates the second law of thermodynamics. Now, if a theory violates a law, you throw it out. So a theory really isn't hard science. A theory is just a theory. It's man's best guess yeah. using some kind of a scientific assumption right. to come up with this theory. Right. For example, man used to believe that um, the proton, we had matter, the proton, the neutron, and the electron. Then we found out that the proton and the neutron were made out of quarks. Two down quarks and an up quark is a proton. Two up quarks and down quark is a neutron. And the only piece of, now, and quarks are little energy packets, so that's energy. 
Right. So the only thing we got left is the electron. Thank God for the electron, that little piece of matter. But unfortunately, when they did the double slit experiment, they found out the electron acts as a wave particle, not as a piece of matter, until observed by an outside observer. As soon as an outside observer observes the electron and expects to see it in a place, it collapses the quiff and becomes matter. Wow. Now that meant, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We, based on our expectations, create the reality we have in our life. That's, that's a good, in fact, that's one of my next questions. We do create reality, and then how do we align what the, the reality we created, what's the best way to align it? Because we've got all kinds of doctrine out there, mm -hmm. all kinds of expression. Mm -hmm. how, how, do we, how do we align ourselves with what's absolute truth versus the reality we've created? Right. Well, and the only way I know how to do that is go through the Word. I mean, that, that's my uh, uh, check. And I don't listen to what a pastor tells me, a preacher tells me, a priest tells me. It's my duty and responsibility to get in the Word myself. And then I translate it from the Greek and the Hebrew to see what those wor words really mean. Because if you don't know what the words really mean, you're going to take the meaning of the guy that just taught it to you and assume that's a truth. Right. So, you know, for example, in, in the Word it says, delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Everybody thinks, well, that means be 